everyone, my name is Grape Applesauce, and welcome back to another video. I know it has been so long since I have last said those words. Wow, time sure does fly, doesn't it? I first off just want to apologize and say I'm really sorry to those of you who have been worried about me in the absence on this channel. I feel really bad for those of you who have been excited to check out my channel for the past year and have seen only no videos to be posted. I thought about this constantly. It was eating away at me, and I really thought I was letting all of you down every single day pretty much so if i made you worried at all i'm really sorry i hope you can find a way to forgive me to keep things short for now i'm doing okay you don't need to worry about me everything's fine if you'd like to hear more about why i was gone and all that sort of stuff in my personal life you can check out the end of the video i'll do a lot longer of an explanation than this please don't just skip right to the end please watch this whole entire video before you get to that you know i spent a year on this video you're about to watch i mean not really but yeah, really. I really appreciate all of you that have even clicked this video. I'm not sure how many of you will, but just thank you so much to those of you who still want to support me and are still there for me. It really means a lot. Thank you. Also, this video has been uploaded on my birthday. Here is a picture of my cake. I am now 28 years old. It's crazy, isn't it? You can see old videos on my channel of me on face cam as like an 18, 19 year old. It's so funny. And without further ado, let's get to this Hexit video. Hexit is a popular mod pack for Minecraft that is all about exploring and adventure. Many years ago, I uploaded a series playing on it, and this year Hexit 2 was finally released. So for the next 100 days, I'm going to be taking on this very dangerous world filled with boss mobs waiting to take me out. To make things even more intense, I'm going to be playing on hardcore mode, which means we could lose our world at any moment. My goals for these next 100 days are as follows. Tame 5 pets. Craft Tinker's Construct Tools. Craft Scale Armor. Explore the Twilight Forest. Build a Castle. Defeat five bosses. Defeat the Wither. And finally, defeat the Ender Dragon. If you enjoy this video at any point, be sure to smash that like button. It really helps me out. And also subscribe to my channel if you happen to be new around here. And without further ado, so begins our journey. It's time to begin our Hexit 2 100 day series. We're here on the main menu. We're gonna start up a new world here. We're going to switch it to hardcore mode, obviously, because I'm pretty hardcore. And we're going to name the world 100 Days Hexit 2. Let's change the world type to realistic. And finally, let's type in a seed. I'm just going to put grape applesauce. So if you'd like to play along with me, that is the seed. And let's create our new world. Here begins day one of our 100 days and the world is finally loaded up i cannot wait to get this let's play started and reach 100 days and i hope all of you are excited to see me reach that as well we're here in the world and what is that right behind me that is a village i spawned right on a village couldn't be any better than that honestly so i'm exploring the village i found this door with some villagers inside i had to go ahead and break them free from the log after doing that i paid myself back for saving their lives by stealing all their food crafting tables and whatever was in their chests. You know what? I'm gonna steal a bed too. I kept looting through all of their houses to get myself some good starter gear because I'm definitely going to need it for all of the creepy crawlies in this mod pack. I went outside to farm some food and I found a little goat that I accidentally smacked. I definitely did not mean to do that. But as I was planting potatoes, I accidentally right clicked the goat and it turns out you can actually make them your pet. So I named him Sergio, the pet goat. I also found this awesome building and inside it there was some chocobos and I had no idea how to even get one of these or how to ride them. So I went over to see that there is a book that I need to buy. I don't have the emerald yet. So in the meantime, I found a waypoint, which actually allows you to travel between waypoints with the cost of XP. So if we find more of these, I'll be able to travel between them. Back to looting more stuff in the village. There is some pretty good stuff. I also stole this nice sleeping spot in their bed and we are going to go on to day two. It's a beautiful morning outside. I can't wait to see what is out here in this world like this weird portal. What is that? Whilst leaving the village, I found out the jungle nearby was on fire and these tigers were losing their home. I had to do whatever it takes to try and save them. I crafted up a stone pick to try and get some iron and inside
inside this cave, there was a couple creepers trying to give me a bad time, and this one specifically. Whilst I was crafting, he tried to nearly kill me, and oh my goodness, I don't know what the heck. I finally got my iron, crafted the bucket, and saved the jungle. It feels good to help out those tigers. Okay, and that definitely was not a tree I was expecting to see. <laughs> what the heck? It's time to sleep here before we go on to day three and four, where I found this awesome new village that we are going to check out. But first, let's mine these diamonds that were in this ravine. We got to the village, and it's time to start checking out this place. I really like the look of this place. It's nice and wide open. So I decided to set up camp here. We're going to go ahead and craft up a diamond pick, and we're going to name this Grapple Shack version 1.0. If you remember the Grapple Shacks, you're an OG viewer on this channel, there's no doubt. After claiming my house, I said hello to the friendly pandas outside. I mean, pandas are my favorite animal, so let me know in the comment section, what is your favorite animal? While stealing everything from this village as well, I found this little thing called a luggage. I placed down the luggage and figured out that this is actually a pet chest that will go ahead and eat everything I drop. Thanks for helping out. And oh my gosh, what the heck? There's a lion trying to attack me. Help me out, luggage. I had to back off and take out that lion. He almost snuck up on me there. Then I spent the rest of the day mining to get some resources. Day six, it's time to get some leather. I would like to attempt to get a backpack and to do that, we are going to need leather, of course. Whilst exploring, looking for cows, I found a few crazy structures that I wanted to check out. First, it was this little brick house that I wanted to go down these little stairs to see what was at the bottom of this. Once I got down to the bottom, I found there was a dungeon. A dungeon I don't think I was quite ready to explore yet, so we left that place. Upon exiting, I found out there was a battle tower in the distance. We are definitely going to have to check that out. But there's also these question marks at the top of my screen, which I have no clue what that means. So I went up to this large castle, and as I got up to the door, I just suddenly became nauseous as multiple skeletons start running outside from inside this building. This place is chock full of crazy mobs, and as I was going inside, I was catching a battle with pretty much everybody who kept coming out at me. Luckily for me, their armor wasn't the strongest. They only had leather on this floor, so I was able to take most of them out, but there was these boss ones that had special effects like this one right here. Well, once I took him out, I went to look down the nope. hallway and I saw a load more skeletons that I just didn't know how I was going to take out. Seems like I angered them all enough to get them all running out towards me, so I left that place, had to get back home. There's no way I'm taking them all out. Day 9 through 10, it's back into a cave to try and get some better resources here so we could take out those skeletons. And speaking of skeletons, why is there so many skeletons in this cave? That one's even a special one. Then I went back into this castle to battle these skeletons and a tough battle it was for most of these guys even though they're only in leather armor they're still doing quite a bit of damage to me and being more annoying than anything so i kept luring them outside one by one to try and get through this place i wanted to explore all of this building that was one of my goals I eventually got to this little prison cell that had a few guys inside, a few special mobs at that, who I was kind of fearful of, so I only just started shooting them. They had no way to get out here and attack me. I took out one of them, and then I took out the other two. I even let one free to see what he would do when I let him free, but that was a terrible idea. He started attacking me. Luckily, I was able to take him out in the end, though, and steal these iron blocks for myself. Let's keep going through this castle here. There's more skeletons here that I just cannot deal with. These guys even have healing stuff. They're healing each other. I had to lure them all outside because they were too strong and eventually they pushed me all the way back to my house once again to where I had to come back on day 11 once again to try and clear out this bottom floor. But again, I'm getting overwhelmed by these guys. It's just like there's never ending amounts of skeletons in this building. They do not stop. First, I had to save the jungle. Now I'm saving a horse that's stuck in the wall of this place. What is going on here? I eventually found some chests that they were guarding with some decent armor inside. It looks like I have finally cleared out the bottom floor so we're gonna go up to the second floor I found a boss skeleton just waiting for me on the steps. And of course, these guys are so overpowered with their OP effects. But I eventually managed to get up to the second floor and begin exploring to see what was up here. What were they hiding from me? I eventually got cornered into a room here and I had to run my way out. And I almost died right there. They almost trapped me in that corner. But I was able to escape with only minimal damages there. I got back down to the lobby floor. There's still more skeletons. I'm trying to find my way out of here. And this is where 
things start to go really bad as I'm trying to escape them. I keep running to even more skeletons. I see a ton down the hall there, so I go up the stairs here. And what do you know what I see up here? A gold armored skeletons with diamond swords and much better gear. So now I'm running through this area. I had to eat a golden apple here because I am close to dying. There's these gold enchanted special skeletons everywhere. I ran out into one of these balconies here. I get pushed over to the edge of the balcony. All of these skeletons are pushing me out. I had to abandon the entire building. Luckily, I had a water bucket to jump over the edge. They started chasing me out into the world here. There's so many skeletons outside of this place. They do not want me coming back here. I try to defend myself from them, but there is too many. I had to run away and take them on one by one, which I ended up doing to take out a few of the special ones, getting some pretty good gear. And the second special skeleton actually dropped a special horse that is actually one of the fastest horses you will ever see in Minecraft. This should be illegal how fast this is. So I was really hyped about my new horse until I tried to cross this river and when I tried to cross this river I figured out well the fastest horse cannot swim at all I tried to save him everything I could do to try and save him to push him out of this water But unfortunately we have lost the fastest horse in Minecraft. I was so upset right now Well, now I want a new horse, so that is what I went out to do. I tamed a new Bruh. horse. This one was actually floating in the air when it actually let me name it, so I had to name it Cloud just because it was floating like a cloud. As you can see, Cloud is nowhere near as fast as our last horse. After that, I went back into a cave to try and get some resources, and you know what happened? A creeper was like, nah, that ain't happening today. They almost tried to kill me there with that Enderman creeper thingy, so I escaped that cave and went back outside to mine some obsidian and whilst doing that I noticed that there was a mouse by this elephant and the elephant wasn't running away and I thought that mice actually made elephants like really scared Is, isn't that a thing next I took that obsidian and I made myself an enchantment table and we're going to need some books to enchant so I went back to the other village using the waypoint to try and take some books from this place but I also did need some string to craft this backpack here we finally have everything we need for a small backpack and you can see I got a little extra storage now. I also threw some armor on my buddy Cloud as I made a bridge for him to cross the river this time. I don't want any more of my horses drowning. I crossed the bridge with Cloud and I went back to the skeleton castle. It was time to try and take this place on once again. I went back up to the floor with the gold enchanted skeletons. There were so many of them waiting for me. They pushed me over to the edge once again. I just don't know how I'm going to take these guys out. I keep having to jump over the edge. I went back up. I kept attacking him. I kept jumping back down back and forth but these guys are just so strong no matter what I do they just keep getting me low and even while I'm sitting down here they got a sniper shooting at me this is actually ridiculous I'm gonna have to come back with some better gear that is for sure day 14 through 17 we have my horse butting in the side of the screen there to let me know it's time to get some better resources here so I went out to try and get some clay and some gravel and some sand it is time to work on tinkers construct which is a mod where you can craft tools and items all with custom resources, so I can't wait to show you guys what kind of tools I make. I need to make these seared bricks here to make this little smeltery, along with all the pattern and other tool building stuff to build my custom tools. But I finally finished this little smeltery. I had to go ahead and put some lava in it so we can smelt some stuff up. Now that the smeltery is done, I need to go into the nether because the resources I need to make these awesome and overpowered tools are actually in here. But let's see if I can go inside and find anything. This is actually what I'm looking for right here, this Ardite Ore. Although I can't mine it with a diamond pickaxe, I will need something better. And this is the other resource I am looking for, Cobalt, and I also can't mine it yet. So I went back to my house to try and get myself some resources that will allow me to go ahead and mine the Cobalt and Ardite. I got this Molten Illuminite there. We're gonna make a pickaxe head to try and cast out our Illuminite pickaxe. We have to get a tool rod as well. And finally, a binding pattern to bring all three parts together. I made a a stone pickaxe head so I can go ahead and cast out around it. And I went ahead and casted a nice pickaxe head here that I can now fill with any resource I want, like this molten alumite. I got myself the pickaxe head finally and all of the other parts to make myself this pickaxe. I got the pickaxe head now, but I do need a few more resources. So I went back into the cave and as I went into this ravine, I accidentally stepped foot on a trap that nearly killed me. Gosh, this world wants me to die. I found this one-time use capsule here. I wasn't sure what it does, so I just threw it out in the world, and hey, look. 
We got a throwable lamp. Kind of cool. Back into the cave to do some more mining here. We need to find the resources so we can get this pickaxe. But I'm hearing really weird noises inside this cave. I finally made it into the cave and I found what was making that weird noise. Those two eyes that just disappeared in front of my face. Now that is creepy. There's also this random chest there that of course was trapped. I had to go ahead and make sure I didn't die. I found some sort of silverfish spawner. They were just spawning nonstop over here. I even tried to mine out the spawner, but there was so many silverfish there that were canceling me from doing it. I had to set them all on fire and finally I could mine the silverfish spawner and get to the gold that I was looking for here. And I finally was able to loot that chest. Oh, and we got ourselves a googly eyed skeleton right here, which is pretty funny. And right next to it, a giant skeleton. Like what is wrong with the skeletons in this world? And again, while going through this cave, yet another trap. Like you can't just do anything and hex it without nearly dying. I got back out to my house here where it's time to smelt up all that gold we just got to make some more binding plates. I made the obsidian binding for our pickaxe as well as a wooden tool rod. And finally, I combined all three things together to get this alumite pickaxe. I named it the Grape Apple Pick V1. And we finally have a custom pickaxe using Tinker's Construct. Really awesome. I also went ahead and named my luggage here Luggy using one of my name tags. I mean, he's been following us around. He needs a name. You can see here, Luggy's been helping me out picking up some cool stuff. Back to the nether. It's finally time to mine up this Ardite that we need to make the OP tools. And as I'm mining some more Ardite here, I am hearing the weirdest noises in the nether. I'm not sure I want to go out there. I also found out mining gold in the nether equals explosions, so yeah, I gotta be careful not to die with that. Then I found this flying beast creature here that looks kind of like a lion. I mean, he seemed pretty friendly. I was just standing here, all minding my own business. I wasn't bothering him at all. Then I went to go ahead and sort through my inventory, and what do you know? He just starts attacking me out of nowhere. But he does a lot of damage. I threw down those potions. I had to start attacking him. I had no choice, but he is doing so much damage. Every hit he gets on me, he actually gets gets me down to half a heart several times. I had to eat my golden apple and use my instant hearts. And finally he had me cornered. I had no other choice but to attack. And I finally took him out there. But oh my gosh, I nearly died like three times. And I realized the only reason I actually stayed alive is I have these pants that have an enchantment called last stand on them that actually takes XP levels away from me to give me health back. So otherwise I literally would have died. But you know, that's not a big deal. We're back to mining the cobalt to get our OP tools. And here is the open nether. I am not so certain I am ready to explore this yet. So I went back to the portal. It's time to go back home and make these OP tools. It is time to start creating some tools. We got our Ardite and our cobalt put in here. And when they mix together in the smeltery, it actually makes something called manulin, which is one of the strongest resources in the game. So I took that manulin and went ahead and made a tool rod for my next pickaxe here. We're also going to make this paper binding, but of course, I still need more resources from the nether. So we had to go back in there and get some more cobalt and make some more manulin. So that is what I did. I came back to the overworld. I made a tool forge to make some more advanced tools. And I made some more manulin stuff like these sword blades and this tool rod. I got myself a paper binding and I made myself a new sword right here. Check this thing out. And we called this thing Grapes Lightsaber. I mean, it looks kind of like a lightsaber. Let's be honest there. And I went ahead and added some quartz to it, which actually increases its sharpness level, as well as some mending moss, which will repair it over time for free. I went ahead and made a pickaxe as well using cobalt, manulin, and paper, and I named that the Grape Apple Pick V2. And I also went ahead and upgraded that to make it mine faster, have some more luck. And here we go. These are the two tools I have created. They're very OP. Back to the nether to quickly get some more quartz to go ahead and max out the sharpness rating on my sword. I need all the attack damage I can get on this thing. And the good thing about my sword specifically is it actually cuts through any armor that the mobs are wearing. So it's doing a lot more damage. Even though it has a smaller damage value, it cuts right through the armor. So technically it actually does a lot of damage. I think it's time to test out my new sword. I found a battle tower out in the wild 
And I went ahead and jumped inside to test out my new sword. And honestly, there was quite a bit of mobs in this place. I wasn't expecting that many. But once we mine out these little spawners, it makes things a lot easier. So I would just go to each floor in this battle tower. But at a certain point, I was getting overwhelmed. There was even a special zombie that forced me to drop my weapon, which almost caused me to die. But I managed to get back inside the battle tower, getting on to another floor here. There are several zombies trying to stop me. This place is getting crazy. I just had to run to the next floor here. They just wouldn't stop overflowing out. At this point, I was not even trying to fight. I was just trying to go to each floor to try and loot the chests and get rid of the spawners. There was these spawners here that got me in a little bit of trouble. I almost jumped out the window there. These poisonous spiders were really getting on my nerves. I thought I was going to die, so I just ran to the roof to see if there was any way to escape. I saw the boss of the battle tower and all the other mobs chasing me, so I just jumped off the edge. Luckily, there was some water right next to it. I managed to survive the battle tower, although I haven't defeated it yet. But I did find a shooting star when I jumped out, so I thought my luck was about to turn around. I actually need the fallen star for some special armor that you'll see later. So I went back home. It's time to craft myself a bow. The sword is not going to cut it on its own. I also need a bow to protect myself. And I used the fallen star I found to create a piece of this scale armor, which is the best armor set in the game. Once I get the entire thing, I will definitely be OP. Back here to the battle tower with my bow in hand. I am ready to take on the battle tower boss. I open the final chest, which causes the boss to get very angry with me. I went to the roof and I didn't actually find him. It seems like he went down a floor and there he is. So I went to the very top floor and I started just sniping him out with this bow. It did some really good damage, but I figured let's get the final kill shot using our brand new sword. I jumped down there and slashed him out really easily. And I took the rest of the loot before the tower started crumbling beneath me. I had no choice but to jump out the window before this entire thing crumbled to the ground. And as you can see, it is blown up. We have defeated a battle tower. Let's go. Next, it's back to the castle with the skeletons. I am determined to clear this place out. Now that I have some better weaponry, I think I could take these guys on. And that I was. I was doing a lot better now with these good weapons. But still, they had tons of skeletons to the point where I had to run outside. And after getting forced out, we found some more fallen stars yet again, which is actually going to be great for us later. I went back home to sleep because we need to get back out there in the morning out in front of my chest another one of these flying lion things are attacking me in front of my home these guys just cannot give me a break can they now it's time to enchant a little bit here i need all the protection i can get i enchanted up and i headed back out once again this time i found a little camp full of mummies so i raided their camp which wasn't much but as we kept pushing forward we found yet another village which had some great stuff for me to loot as well including a chocobo saddle as i kept exploring i almost ran into a ravine on my buddy cloud i needed to keep collecting these blue flowers on the ground to get more hexical essence to craft up the scale armor and we found yet another village here on the beach so we used it to go back home and craft up some more scale armor pieces i made a cool little hook shot here and i also upgraded my backpack to become a lot bigger i need some more space back out to exploring i found this floating pirate ship in the sky this thing was absolutely massive as i got a bit closer Closer, I could see that there is a pirate captain boss on the screen. That is definitely someone I'm going to battle, but first we need to get this scale armor. I'm camping out over here. I saw yet another falling star fall right by the pirate ship. We grabbed that last piece of hexical essence and we went back home. We have the final pieces of my scale armor, completing one of my objectives in this series to craft an entire set of scale armor. And as you can see, once I throw it all on, not only do I look insanely awesome but i also get a couple buffs as well like strength 2 resistance and absorption 2 infinitely with my op scale armor i also wanted to get it enchanted using the advanced enchantment table which allows you to get any enchantment you want specifically so i went ahead and got protection 4 on breaking 3 on my helmet i had to go into the nether to get more xp though to upgrade the rest of my armor where i found a ton of magma cubes guarding this area i don't know why i thought i was gonna battle them I 
got in a mosh pit of magma cubes and I nearly got thrown in the lava. But back to mining that quartz, that's what we needed to go ahead and upgrade my tools some more. I added the quartz to my bow and sword to get some extra damage and I enchanted some more of my scale armor to go back in and do it all over again. This time I actually found a nether fortress which had a ton of bad guys inside that were definitely not happy with me being there. I also found some nether wart to grab whilst also battling some wither skeletons and some really weird blazes that could also teleport and strike me with lightning. I looted the rest of this fortress and got the heck out of there. Once I got home, we changed out my buddy's horse armor to diamond horse armor and we finally finished upgrading all of my scale armor to be protection for on breaking three. I threw last stand on a couple pieces as well to help save my life. After upgrading my armor, I noticed that it was a special night in the world. You could see that there was a golden tint to the sky as the chat says stars are starting to rain from the sky. Let's jump over this ravine here, nearly fell in it, but this is a really rare day where it's non-stop falling stars falling from the sky. I definitely collected 13 of these things and it's finally time to get back to the castle and try and defeat these skeletons. They're all guarding the stair set to the final floor. I ended up taking almost all of them out until they sent out their final diamond skeletons. And once I defeated those at the top of the stairs was the final boss, the necromancer. And luckily for me, my weapon was so good that it just shredded right through him. I have defeated the boss at this castle once and for all. It feels so good considering how much we have struggled with this place. We took all of the loot and we jumped into the water, taking one last look at this place. It's good to be done with it. Next, I took a trip back to the old village to see if our buddy Sergio was still there. And what do you know? There he is. Next, I wanted to try taming some chocobos. So I went ahead and grabbed some food to go ahead and get that done. We tamed our first chocobo and we named it Big Bird. Now that I've taken out the castle, I think it's time we try and take on this pirate ship. So I went ahead and blocked up into the sky and we made it onto the pirate ship. And let's just say the pirates were definitely not happy to see me aboard. They were shooting at me with some guns, so I had to take them all out using a bow. And once I got up close, I was able to use a sword as well. I popped in some music to take out the rest of these pirates, including a secondary boss, Old Two Eyes, which I took out pretty easily. Then we went back upstairs to take on the captain in the captain's quarters. And he was a tough fight, all right. Our battle brought us outside to where I actually hit him off of his own ship. He fell all the way to the ground, but somehow he still had survived. So before I went down and finished him off, I went ahead and set the ship on fire. I quickly went and looted everything I could before this thing burnt down right before my very eyes. And we jumped down to the bottom to try and find this pirate captain. We finally found him chilling on the ledge and we took him out once and for all. We have defeated another boss. It feels so good to get a captain's revolver. And there's the remains of his ship. It is burning in the sky. Inside the ship, there was these cloud boots, which once I put on, you could see how awesome they are. They make me run fast and jump really high. I found another one of these castles, this time a little bit of a smaller one for me to take on. There were some skeletons inside, but they were nothing for me compared to the other bosses I had just defeated. I looted their stuff and went back to this little village I found with some traders inside to see if I can maybe get some more ammo or some other guns. Turns out I didn't really have enough, but hey, this villager wanted pizza. They even had a resident giant living here. Back out to exploring, I found this beautiful forest that had pink and purple trees, which actually had a village next to it too. So I claimed that waypoint so I could now teleport here. You could see all of the beautiful trees in the distance. I just have to build something here. This is the grape applesauce place if I've ever seen it. So I spent some time gathering some resources and building up Castle Le Grapevine. I ran out of stone bricks, but found some ruins in the distance, which I could then mine their stone brick to use for my build. A pickaxe wasn't quite fast enough, so we went ahead and made a slime hammer, which I called a slammer. We upgraded that thing and watch how fast we can mine these blocks now. Once I got all the blocks, I finished up the castle and put my purple flag on top. And there you have Castle Le Grapevine in all its beauty. I think it came out really well. And here is the tour all the way around. You got to see my castle and here is the entrance. This is gonna be a nice place for me to live. We have ourselves a little courtyard here. And if you run into this area, we have the inside, which has my bed and all of my storage. Back out to the wilderness. I wanted to take on another battle tower, this time a little bit quicker. I rushed right on in and got to mining these spawners and got all the way to the top floor before we had yet another boss here. He dropped all of his loot on the ground and we went on downstairs and we took him
them out so easily with our new sword. I went ahead and grabbed all of the loot before the building crumbled before my very eyes, jumping off the edge. Luckily, our cloud boots didn't give us any damage. I got back to my house, and what do you know? There's this random golem sitting outside. I clicked on him. All of a sudden, he starts grabbing the blocks from around the area, and look how big he is getting. Suddenly, I have a boss fight on my hands. We're using this sword, which is pretty good, and of course, my armor is even better. So we managed to finally take him out. Next, I crafted a hang glider because this is a much easier way to get around the world than just running around, obviously. So as you can see, once I was flying around, I found this little area. It seemed like a little castle. I went on inside. There was also something that said giant tortoise along with some question marks. I'm definitely going to check out this place. There's some zombies and other mobs here, but there's also this random lamp that once I broke the lamp, there is a boss battle that was initiated. The question marks were revealed as the lich and the lich was very easy to take out. I mean, my armor and sword at this point is just so good. I found a little tunnel attached to this castle area that I jumped on inside and I started exploring into this little sewer system until I found it. There it was sitting in a chamber all alone, the giant tortoise. I had no idea how crazy this thing was until it hit me for the very first time, which almost killed me if it was wasn't for those enchants that give me last stand, I would have just died in one hit to that thing. He kept putting me at half a heart over and over. Every attack he does is so powerful, but I finally figured out that if I use a shield, I can bounce him off of my shield and get some hits in. So that is what I did. I blocked him and I got some hits in. I took him down to half health. Right before I'm about to take him out, he somehow just starts healing himself all the way back up, which was just really frustrating. Now I have to take him out before he heals back up. He's just bouncing it all over the place. I got to avoid him. This is crazy right now. Oh my gosh. Okay, I got to avoid him. And finally, I got him stopped in the corner. It's time to take out this giant tortoise. And that is what we did. And that was probably the closest to dying in this entire series so far. That was until three seconds later when I attacked this ender creeper that blew me up to half a heart as well. Wow, this is just very dangerous. Next, we're back to my house. It's time to make some teleporters, which makes it really easy to get back to my castle whenever I want. Speaking of castles, there's actually a castle right across from my house. So I went and checked that out, conquered that place and check out the view from here. It just looks amazing to see my castle in the distance. And here is a nice flight back home. Look at the trees around here. Just so nice. I went back to my old place to get our horse Cloud to bring back to our new castle. And there's Cloud safe and sound in his new home. I found another horse in this area that I decided to tame. And what do you know? This is a flying horse as well. This one flies a little bit more than Cloud. Um, yeah, that was probably the weirdest thing ever. Today, horses can fly. And for that, I will name you Pony Hawk, the flying horse. I made a little stable area for my horsies. And what do you know? Pony Hawk prefers my bed over their stable. No, nope. that's my bed, buddy. I finished the stable off for my horses. Take a look at this place. It's a very nice home for the horsies. Day 70 through 82 it's time to take on another castle this time there's an exterminator prototype in here we're gonna see what that's all about i get into the building here i'm looking through all of the dungeons here there's just a lot to explore down here there's so many pillagers just non-stop coming through i went afk for a minute and listen to this I had to pause my game just to make sure I wasn't hearing things there. And yeah, that was a deed from the game. Not scary at all. I finally got to the room with the exterminated prototype. And there it was, an iron golem with all kind of gadgets attached to him. Luckily, my sword is super good against him. I was able to hit him a couple times, which deactivated his shield, which allowed me to spam attack. And there we go. We have taken out the exterminator. Back to my house. It's time to make a twilight forest portal. Time to take out some more bosses. But first, we got to get into this portal. So let's go check out what this Twilight World is all about. And here we are in the Twilight Forest, one of the most popular mods in Minecraft. And a purple sheep, too. I mean, you can't go wrong with that. Some more time has passed, and I eventually found a boss in the Twilight Forest, the Naga. Now, this guy is pretty powerful, but I think my stuff is a lot better. I mean, he's doing damage when he rushes at me. But once I got him trapped, I mean, I, I cut through it pretty easily with this sword. And I got myself the Naga Trophy and some Naga Scales as my prize. It's 
time to take out yet another boss in this journey. We are going into the Twilight Lich Forest here, into the building with the Lich inside. And as you can see, the battle is pretty intense. I wasn't sure how to do damage until I figured out that if I can redirect an Ender Pearl using my shield, it actually hurts it. Somehow I didn't block this Ender Pearl. It put me down to half a heart and yet another close call in this journey. I swear if it wasn't for last stand, I would have died like probably five times at least by now. Hexit on hardcore mode is not easy and you are finding that out firsthand watching this series. The Lich is sending out all of these zombies to try and attack me. Finally, it gives up and goes to a sword itself and I take it out pretty easily there. But unfortunately for me, I did not get the trophy because as you can see, the zombie right after actually wore it on its head. And when I took out the zombie, it didn't drop the trophy. So yeah, no trophy for me. Day 87 through 88, I found a maze underground, which houses yet another boss. So we're gonna go through this place and take out these cow humanoid things. This is just too creepy for me right now. I found this book called forbidden reading okay that looks like some forbidden text oh wait turn your back he is watching you dude don't be saying that to me we finally got to the room with the minish room boss inside look at this thing i mean it wasn't very strong at all i'll be honest we took him out got a ton of these soups and a minish room trophy and finally it's on to the last boss i wanted to take out the hydra the three-headed dragon one of the toughest monsters in all of hexit i did a lot of damage to this thing but it just kept growing more and more heads it started out with three and now it's got five this is just getting too much of Eventually, my sword strikes were too powerful, and the Hydra has gone down, gaining me the Hydra trophy. I had to wear it on my head. Look how cool it looks. What a journey in the Twilight Forest. We are back to the overworld. It's time to mine up some quartz and emeralds because I wanted to get over here to this village to trade this bartender for some more of these god apples. I have used a lot of those throughout these boss battles. I need some more. I also traded for some food as well. You can't go wrong with that. Look at all this steak. Time to teleport back to my house. And speaking of teleporters, I forgot about this little teleporter underneath my uh, little castle area. So I went on inside this teleporter. We're in now a mystery world. I have no idea what all these portals mean. There's doors with portals behind them. I'm just gonna go through this one here. This is just the strangest world ever. I don't even know, like, is this reality? Is it not? Is this supposed to be a dream world? I don't even know. I'm just going through random doors, random hallways. And all of a sudden this hallway was gonna try and kill me having me fall through the floor luckily i ran back through we get to this door that leads us to this little nether area and on the other end it leads me to the stair set that goes all the way down to this door right here and once i get through this door i have to climb up this little waterfall here and get to yet another portal that leads me to another stair set this is getting ridiculous now finally through this last door here and i'm in this little platform room i'm not even sure what this was supposed to be but I think that was the end of it. So I just teleported back home. Well, all of this has been fun, but I know what you all want to see. You want to see the Ender Dragon battle. So that is what we are preparing to do. Getting my Eyes of Ender, getting my Hang Glider. We're flying to try and find this portal room. But on the way there, I got distracted by this meteor that just fell out of the sky. I had to go ahead and check that out. But back to finding the portal room. And on the way, we found yet another one of these cool villages. And next to that village is actually a cave that leads directly into the stronghold. A little exploring in the stronghold. We have found the portal room and it is time to take on the ender dragon. Let's put all of our eyes of ender into the portal. But before we do that, I did want to craft up a few snacks. We need some purple grape ice cream to take on this dragon. I noticed these weird black particles just taking over my house slowly. I'm not sure I was supposed to go in that portal. But hey, I got my purple ice cream. You know, life is good. I got purple grape yogurt as well. It's time to eat this stuff. I mean, that was one of my goals in this series, you know, craft purple grape ice cream like who wouldn't want that you know what i didn't have enough of the grapes i had to plant some more of my own because this is the grapevine all of you so there are all of you growing right there i also realized before we defeat the dragon we need to take on the wither boss as well so i quickly did that and this was actually pretty easy to take out probably the easiest so far my armor and sword is just so strong at this point but i got myself the nether star time to use that nether star to make ourselves a beacon and it looks like cloud is quite enjoying it i know i'm really pushing this ender dragon 
dragon fight, but I wanted to take out all the bosses I can before it. And I found out there was a Cyclops too, that if you go out in the middle of the ocean, you can find a random island that'll have a Cyclops living at the bottom. So I went out on a boat and eventually I found myself a Cyclops island. We went down to the bottom to check out his lair. And oh my gosh, there he is. He's huge. Oh my gosh, he just smacked me really far back. But luckily again, my armor is so good and so is the sword. It doesn't matter how many times he smacks me. I'm just gonna eventually take him out. Oh my gosh, look how much damage I'm doing. He tried to use a laser, but it was not enough. I got your Cyclops eye, buddy. And we're gonna use that thing to get a beacon eye. We're gonna put it on top of our beacon. And now look at that. We could see mobs around our house. You know what time it is? Day 100, we are here activating the portal. It's been a long journey here on these 100 days of Hexit. It's time to go in and defeat this dragon once and for all. The moment you have all been waiting for, the Ender Dragon battle. Let's go in here. We gotta snipe all of these posts down. Luckily, I was able to take out two before the dragon just launched me back. I didn't even bring a water bucket in here. That is not good at all. I have my cloud boots, I believe, if I really need to avoid the damage. But here we go. The dragon is starting to take some damage from my sword, albeit not very much. This dragon was the strongest thing I had battled so far. And I found out even after breaking all of the posts that were healing him up, these little drones in the sky were still healing him. And after a long battle, I still had done no damage to him and my armor was just about broken. So I had to teleport the heck out of there. We need to go back in proper prepared. And that is what I did. I got some new armor on and we went back in to take him out. I got more arrows and look at the damage we're doing now. Some decent damage, right? The bow is not very powerful, but if I hit him in the head with the sword, it's doing a lot more damage. Those drones in the sky, as you can see, are trying to heal him and they just healed him to full health just like that. At this point, I am not sure how I'm gonna take out this ender dragon. This has been a very long battle. He just keeps healing himself. Luckily, some of these arrows do massive amounts of damage and I just kept spamming them before he could heal. He did actually heal there, but it seems over time I'm doing more and more damage and he keeps getting healed. It doesn't matter though. My arrows are doing so much damage at this point and I think this is it. It's time to take out the ender dragon, but he flies away before I can get the last hit. But there we go. We have landed a few bow shots and there we go. We have taken out the ender dragon at the end of day 100 in Hexit. What a journey this has been and we have to finish it off of course by taking out the dragon. It was only right and that was probably the hardest dragon battle I have ever played in all of my days of playing Minecraft. Well, let's see if we can get our dragon egg. Let's click this and oh my, I just went through the portal. The egg went through the portal out of all blocks in the world. Okay, let's jump through here. Where is that egg? I woke up in my bed. There's no dragon egg around anywhere. So you're telling me we lost a dragon egg and one of our trophies from the twilight? Well, that's unfortunate, but hey, check out our twilight forest trophies, the ones that we do have up here on the wall. Well, that has been it for this episode of 100 Days in Minecraft Hexit 2. It has just been so much fun playing this mod pack. It brought me back to my old days of playing Hexit 1 back on the channel, like in 2015 or so. If you really can't get enough Hexit, you can go back and watch that old series of mine as well, but I had had so much fun here today. I hope all of you did as well. If you made it to the end, I really do appreciate it. Be sure to leave a like on the video as this took so much time. It really does help me out. And if you're new to my channel and made it to this point, make sure you click that subscribe button as well as the notification bell. And for those of you who have stuck around to this point, I had a few more words to add, like I said at the beginning of the video. For those of you who have just watched my entire Hex at 100 Days video, thank you so much for tuning into that. I know only the real ones are watching right now, so I can get into the real stuff about why I was gone. I've had this 1 million plaque since I hit a million subs, and I just don't know why. I've had this thing in my head like, just couldn't open but finally i think this is the best time to open it there's never going to be a better time thank you for 1 million subscribers <laughs> like opening this will really like bring back some sort of feeling that i had last year before you know the past year of events happened so let's just open this all right here we go 1 million sub plaque oh my goodness i can't believe this we're gonna experience this together and Oh my goodness, this thing is huge. You're bigger than Vancouver. You're bigger than Venice. You're even bigger than Las Vegas. One million subscribers. Maybe you've imagined that day for a long time. Maybe you never thought you'd grow so big. That is definitely true. I never thought I would get to this point. That's incredible. Look at this. Oh, 
Now I guess you won't look at it. This is just incredible. Thank you all so much. And I think this was definitely needed. I needed to open this to bring me this feeling back. Some of you might not know this either, but I have a second channel too. I have been uploading kind of on that channel while I was gone the past year. I've been doing some Pixelmon content on a channel called Grapey. We hit 100K subscribers over there too. So thank you so much for that as well. Honestly, never thought I would have even hit 100K on that channel as well. So that was definitely needed. I am feeling so inspired right now after opening those. I think the reason that I kind of haven't really opened those is that I kind of suffer with some imposter syndrome. I don't know, for some reason, I just look back on some of the things I've done over the years and I just can't believe that over 1 million people have subscribed to this channel. People have watched my videos in, in the millions. I'm just a regular person, regular guy from Wyoming. I'm an only child. I don't have any brothers or sisters. This is the most personal information I've ever talked on this channel so i hope you all real ones are enjoying this i've never really just talked to all of you like this on a personal level i think a reason for that is you know i'm kind of very to myself and and closed off type of person i think over the 10 years i've done youtube and pretty much on this channel i've never really said anything about my personal life to all of you the most you really know is like my name and stuff which is sean if you don't know so really the point where i stopped uploading came down to just feeling like i had to do a certain type of content not that i like was forcing it or anything i still enjoyed every video i was making at the time but i just felt over time it was just youtube was going in this direction where you needed to like feed the algorithm and it was something i let take over my entire life it's kind of hard as a youtuber to not let that stuff take over your life as well especially when you've been doing it for so long there's so many ups and downs as a youtuber between the ones out of tens your awesome viral videos and then the 10 out of tens the videos that didn't seem to resonate with many people. You have to be pretty mentally strong to be a YouTuber and especially not to get caught up in all the numbers and stuff like that and just focus on making the content you enjoy doing. And I mostly miss the old days of being on a server, just playing Minecraft with my friends. I think that's where I enjoyed doing YouTube the most and I had the most fun building something greater than this channel right here that you're watching. Building up a group of other people, something I always really found a purpose in life doing. So slowly, over time you can see how I was losing the motivation and the burnout of not taking a break uh, for over 10 years basically was catching up to me and I wasn't being healthy at all with my physical and mental health when it came to YouTube and just my life in general. I was focusing too much on YouTube and in turn was letting my physical and mental health slowly decline which caught up to me and led to this one year break. There's some other things that contributed as well which I'll talk about. I struggle a lot with social anxiety and I think that's something that has I don't know, kind of like hindered my career, I guess, on YouTube over over the years. I always think about how many missed opportunities I might have had because of the way I am. And while there are still some regrets, I think it's okay because I still found my way at the end of the day. And all of you believed in me and I still was able to get to where I am despite, you know, the shortcomings I feel I have in myself. And I think the social anxiety is another reason why I just didn't upload for so long. The first few months is like, all right, it's fine. But the more time goes on, you're you're just like, how am I supposed to come back? And, and those thoughts of doubt creep in your head. It has to be the craziest video ever, which really doesn't have to be. I know I just uploaded a one hour video basically, but this is the type of content I really want to be doing. The 100 days type content I think is something I could see myself doing in the future. Just other long form types of series content I think I want to get into as I start uploading again. I really hope all of you will be here for this journey as we continue on uploading. I've been uploading thousands of videos through those 10 years. I never took a break ever, like an extended break. I'd always been uploading constantly, but I had never Ever, like in my mind said okay I'm taking a break it's felt really good to relieve myself of the stress of making YouTube videos because at a certain point you just get caught up in chasing the algorithm rather than just focusing on making the content you want to make as a youtuber I think that's something a lot of people struggle with including myself so now that I'm coming back I've really focused on the content I really want to upload and I think that all of you will really enjoy as well I found some new hobbies while I was not uploading because <laughs> if I didn't I would have really been 
been like quite depressed to be honest. I started making music towards the end of last year, uh, making like hip hop beats, rap beats, house music, lo-fi beats, ambient music. I've just been doing all types. The music in the background while I'm talking right now is actually ambient music I created myself. So I hope that some of you will be interested in my music as much, if not more than my YouTube videos. It's something I'm very passionate about. And this is something I really want to pursue as well as, you know, uploading these videos. So pretty soon here, I'm going to start uploading my music as well. I really hope that some of you will support it. I think it's some music that you will all really enjoy. I've been spending so much time just learning music and getting better. But this got me through the hard times of not uploading YouTube and getting through the feelings that I was just letting everybody down. Also, I was dealing with, um, in January, I ended up getting the virus that's been going around the world. The, the forbidden one I can't really say on YouTube, I don't think. I wasn't really sick like too sick. I had minimal symptoms to be honest and I was better within a week or so but a week after I got better I just had sudden onset permanent tinnitus basically. I don't know if much of you know about tinnitus but basically it's like ringing in your ears that never goes away and I got this as a part of the virus like a side effect and I've been dealing with it ever since like for the past year now and this has been the single most like strongest thing to the detriment of my mental health I feel like. Learning how to cope with this constant ringing sound in my ear is pretty tough but it's gotten a lot easier to cope with over the past year it's starting to move to the background of my hearing i'm not hearing it as much but man it really does affect my mental health and i feel for anyone else out there who is dealing with tinnitus or any other hearing problems like that over the summer as well i went to las vegas i guess i could tell you that i saw grazer king tong shadow apples we went to the ufc like international fight week that was the first time i traveled since the start of the pandemic so it was nice to get out there and see my friends once again but yeah that was my summer that's basically where i've been and what i've been doing the past year a lot of focusing on music that has kept me going every single day so i really hope that you will all check that out once i start posting about it if you want to keep up with me you can check out my socials at grape applesauce on instagram and twitter but for the future of my youtube channels i would definitely like to focus on 100 days series like the one you just watched i want to do some sort of like like weekly series maybe like a survival hardcore survival series maybe a server with youtubers or something like that i just miss the old survival days of hopping on a server with some other people and like i said i do have that second channel where i was uploading some 100 days of pixelmon so i might be uploading some more pixelmon videos here and there but wow that was a lot of talking thank you so much to the real ones who have just sat there and listened to me rant on for like 10 minutes this is getting to be a long video but i really 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 do appreciate those of you who are standing by me and still want to support me and are here for me despite me not being here and not being um, a very communicative over the past year so thank you all so much for watching this video I appreciate each and every one of you I hope you know that I want all of you to keep a smile on your faces and stay positive and we will see you all in the next video thanks so much for watching goodbye